Today I am in a forest in southern France looking for Scolopendra cingulata, the Mediterranean or Megarian giant centipede. This is a species that lives in a lot of southern Europe and around the Mediterranean. There are several morphs of Scolopendra cingulata in France and today we're looking for two specific ones. One of them is the light green one and one of them is the dark green. Uh, now this is interesting. Here we have a Mediterranean band centipede in an ant's nest. I'm not sure if it's in use or not, but strange place for it to be anyway. I'm trying to pick it up here. Here you are. And this is one of the normal ones. Oh, a little Moorish gecko, AKA the crocodile gecko. School of Pendra Singulata just flew out of this rock. Yeah, there it is. The centipede in there. Oh, this is one of the normal ones. Hold on. Let me try to get it out. Here it is. It seems almost impossible to pick up, but I think I got it. There you have it. And this one is just large enough that it still has the blue on its terminal legs and the pairs adjacent to them. Don't really need to mess with this guy too much. Oh, nice. Scolopendra right here. So this form right here is actually the second one we were looking for. This is the dark green one. I've only ever seen one that was darker than this. And you can tell that the banding is a little more obscure because the body is a little more uniform in color. I'll see if I can find any more of these, though it's a bit tough. And look at this leg right here. It's regrown. This one can uh, go back. It'll find its way. I found the centipede right here, running around under a rock. This is a house centipede. Scutigura Cleopatra. And it's uh, full grown. Where's it gone? Oh, it's going up my sleeve. It's full grown at about only two to two and a half centimeters. This centipede right here is about at least 10 times more common than the uh, Mediterranean banded centipede. Oh, nice. That is one pretty large Scolopendra cingulata right there. Look. Um, and it seems to have some sort of issue with its uh, cephalic plate where it didn't molt correctly. And now there's little indentations. Let's see if I can get this one on my hand. Can't really uh, put any of these rocks back with centipedes because they always fall out of place. And then. Um, crush the centipede, which I don't want to do. Come on. Oh, that works, I guess. Here, put this back down. Come here, please. There we go. A very large orb beaver spider with a very large web too. And the web is so strong to the point where it's just pulling on this rosemary uh, enough so that it's all bunched up together here. The web extends there. Over to that bush over there. Ah, Scolopendra cingulata, uh, one of the dark green ones. Ah, just got bitten, damn it. I think I got it. It's really quite unsurprising that I found this particular specimen here because we're in a forest. And this dark form seems to love forests. I don't think I've ever found one outside of a forest. Meanwhile, the light green ones like to go in clearings like that one over there. And as you can see, it's still sunny outside, but that's going to change tomorrow. The rains are coming, the season is coming to an end and all the centipedes are going to go look for a dry place to call their home. This one is free to go. Look at my centipede bite, y'all. My finger's starting to look like a damn bean pod. Here's the other one, completely normal. Bean pod. There is a conehead mantis down here, larger than I'm what I'm used to seeing. Actually, yeah, this is the largest one I've ever seen. There you have it. Really cool mantis. Come back. Oh, nice. Here we have another dark form of the Med Mediterranean banded centipede. Let's see if I can catch this one. Uh, almost. It's disappearing in the leaf litter. I think I got it. Oh, that is a little 
Scolopendra cingulata. When Scolopendra cingulata starts out as a little peedling like this one here, it does have blue and a very vibrant red. This can also be observed on the head, the cephalic plate, and the antenna. Though it tries very hard, the Scolopendra cingulata baby cannot bite my skin because it is not mature enough. Off you go. Crocodagico. There it is. Oh. Ooh, snake. This right here is a Western Mulpulia snake. If I'm not mistaken, the snake right here, Malpolon monspecialanus monspecialanus, that's the subspecies, is the only venomous snake in France that isn't a viper. But getting envenomated by the snake is actually quite tough. This is a rear fanged species, which means that the fangs, or the teeth that de deliver the venom, are located quite far back in the jaw. This is one of very few snake species that I know of that starts out dull and then becomes vibrant instead of the other way around. Adults of this species are greenish, yellow, and then black. Meanwhile, these juveniles are just gray and brown. I am releasing this snake now. Oh, nice. Scolopendra cingulata, a dark one. This has got to be the lightest dark form that I've ever seen. And then they get almost black, which is quite cool. You can see there it's using its force appeals to try to get away. They'll use them to, to grip onto surfaces, except when they do this, they're not really injecting any venom usually, but they can. There's a fissure in the ground here. Let's see how deep it is. Not too bad. Nice. A big, fat, dark skull pendula. Very cool. Glad to have found this one because it's as large as the uh, largest one I've ever found. And the largest one I've ever found was a normal morph. So seeing one as the uh, dark morph, dark green at least, uh, is really awesome. Since we have a larger centipede here, we might as well take this opportunity to look at the maxillipeds and the force appeals. There you have it. The business end of a scolopendra. Here we have a juvenile, normal scolopendra cingulata. Well, normal is sort of a relative term here, but uh, this one actually just bit me. You can see the bite mark on the base of my thumb there. Anyway, uh, I didn't think it was worth showing this one until um, I found this centipede right here. And I wanted to show that even at a small size, you can see this one's very small, we can see the difference between the two morphs. Here we have the dark morph, and very obviously the other light green morph. The banding and the borders are very clear here. Meanwhile, they're very obscured here. Here are the two centipedes side by side. Very clear difference between the two. Obviously one smaller than the other, but that just reinforces my point. Morphs of different Scolopendra, um, depending on the species, usually become more apparent once they're adults. Scolopendra, dark form right here. It's going down a hole. Let's see if I can get it out. Got it. This is quite unexpected. Here's a normal morph. That's still quite dark, but it's under a rock that hasn't been in its place for too long, which isn't too surprising, I guess, though it is unexpected because we have had some warm nights. Just got bitten on the index finger. Not sure if you saw that. Anyway, I'm going to give this uh, centipede a new rock, courtesy of myself. Well, that will be all for this video, so thank you for watching.